Are you looking for a place where to fix your keys if loss or damage? Or are you taking on how to duplicate your home, office, or car keys? Don't worry, because your worries are all over. Auto Key Liberia is the best solution to all of your problems. At Auto Key Liberia, we are specializing in all keys programs and professional in other keys and remote of all techs. We are located at Say on Time Bourgeois Online. Find us at Clever Mission Junction EOW Community. For more information, you can call the following cell numbers. 0777-337-808 or 0886-530512. Do business with Auto Key Liberia and thank me later. Are you looking for a property to buy or rent? Are you a property owner and looking for a quick and suitable way to sell your properties? Are you looking for a house, an apartment, or land to buy in Liberia, West Africa? Look no further, because Superior Real Estate has all the solutions to your problems. They have beautiful acres of land and comfortable homes for you to buy now. Register and incorporate it. Superior Real Estate is bringing honest real estate transactions and a peace of mind to all their clients. Located in Pizio, Superior Real Estate can be reached on 0880-544-111 or WhatsApp them on plus 231-775-874610. You will not be disappointed. Superior Real Estate, real estate you can trust. We all know the headache we go through sending money to our loved ones, friends, and family in Liberia. High fees, long lines in banks, the usual complaint of the system being down, such a waste of time and energy. That is why I was very happy when I learned that SendWave is now in Liberia. So now I can send money anytime from anywhere directly from my smartphone to the MTM Lone Star Cell mobile money account of a loved one friend or family within seconds for just a tiny fee. So download SendWave now to your phone from your Apple Store or Google Play Store, add your details, and don't worry, they are very safe and secure, and start sending money today. Don't forget to insert the promo code CASTA to get free $5 credit added to your first transfer. SendWave is secure, super fast, and by far, the most affordable way to send money to Liberia. I'm Henry P. Costa and a very happy customer. Thank you. All right, folks. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Costa Show. Today is uh, Thursday. The 11th day of March, 2021. I'm Henry Pedro Costa, your humble servant, and uh, we're very glad to be here this morning. And I believe uh, Boakai Kamara, my co-host, must be back from Lufa. Boakai, are you are you back yet with us in studio this morning? Yeah. Good morning, Costa, and good morning to our new listeners. It's good to be back here with you. Yep, it's good to have you back. So tell us about your trip to Lufa. How how was it? How was the feast? Yeah, it went well. Everything uh, we went for went well. And uh, uh, let me just say thanks to everybody that reached out to me, the family, uh, those from Guinea and here in Liberia. We were right at the border, Guadalupe. So uh, people from Guinea just came over and we had a feast. And it was great. How far is it from Kwaruboni to Guinea, Baka? I've actually been to Kwaruboni. I think I went to Bakedu. Bakedu should be the capital of Kwaruboni, right? Sure. Um, they get various towns in Kwaruboni, but from where I was, uh, 
is Kolela. Kolela is just like um like a 30 minute walk from Guinea. You can go Guinea, you buy things and come back the same day and even go back more than two, three times. That's pretty, pretty close. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and, and how was it there? I mean, when uh, with your people, I mean, uh, when was the last time were you there? Um, I was there two years ago. So um, I went there. It was great. It's just that the issue about uh, internet and voice call, <sighs> you have to stand to a specific area before you can get the, uh, uh, the network on your phone. Uh, that's just a major problem. But for uh, uh, Bakidu, the network is there. But where I was, that's just a major, major problem. You don't have access to internet and a voice call. You have to stand to a specific area before you can get a uh, connection. Yeah, well, you know the, the mobile network operators, they do expansion based on uh, uh, market analysis. So yeah. they will conduct a market survey to determine you know, potential profitability before they make an investment. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a certain size of pop population and a potential demand for service, uh, they're not going to invest yeah. a whole lot of money which is what is required to install a tower in that area. Sure. Yeah, that's just it. That's just it. And, and, it's, and it's like that all over Af Africa, you know? So uh, we hope that things will improve so that our people in that part of the country can have access to, you know, uh, communication services, just as those in um, more urban and, and affluent parts of the country. All right, welcome back. We're glad to have you back and uh, very, very good. So you heard about this. Uh, so Buffer Chambers, mm -hmm. you heard about the recent accident thing. What is it with Buffer Chambers? And every time he's, his, his convoy is, is hitting people and knocking people down. And, and, and I'm told there was a recent one that, that happened yesterday. Yeah, a that, pregnant woman. A pregnant woman, yes. Mm -hmm. They knock her over. Yeah. Crazy. The last time and, Buffer uh, Chambers, she, mm -hmm, go, she go ahead. She had a miscarriage right after the accident. So yeah. we just don't know. Always Buffer Chambers and accident. Yeah. You know? And, and uh. here's the thing about him. The last time he was in, his convoy was involved in an accident was just around Charles Taylor's house. Mm -hmm. Several mm -hmm. people were struck. And this guy, instead of even getting out of his vehicle to show concern, to show some empathy, he sat in his car, too good to get down. Sat in his car. And the last time, you know, he hit a pastor. Yeah. He ran into yeah. a pastor. The pastor from our brother, Mike Fire Davis Church. He ran into the pastor and they nearly killed that man, if not for God. Buffer mm. Chambers was in the wrong. The police conducted the investigation. They submitted the report that Buffer Chambers was wrong. The pastor tried to get Chambers to pay for that car. Chambers refused to do it. This was 2018. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2018. Buffer Chambers never paid for that pastor's car. I'm telling you. Now, this is the third time Buffer Chambers has been involved in an accident. Ran into a pregnant woman and she had a miscarriage right after the accident. Of course. Yeah. She could have died. And more than likely, which is consistent with his pattern when it comes to his behavior of his callousness, his insensitivity, his wickedness, Buffer Chambers will not help that Poor woman. He will not help her. Yeah. This is what he does, folks. He will run Jalalai, into people. I don't know Jalalaine or... Jalalaine. Did you read that post his own brother wrote about him? That long post? Sure. Yeah. His own blood brother wrote 
and buffer chambers. And you should read the post. Well, yeah, I mean, they say he was not in the car, but it is, his, it, it is his convoy. That post just tells you a lot about who Buffer Chambers is. He's mm -hmm. a wicked man, a mean man, a selfish man. All that noise he made about Ellen when he was up, when he was in the opposition, it was just so that he could get some relevance. Today, look where he is. You know, I want to say this, folks. I have something to say this morning about the CPP. And I can't keep quiet anymore about this attitude. And listen to what I'm about to say, folks. If you disagree with me, share your disagreement. You know, they often say when you are young and you are powerful and you are well-liked by the people, a lot of people will tell you, say, oh, be humble, be humble. Isn't that what they do to me, black guy? Sure, that's it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but people encouraging me to be humble. Be humble, be humble. They, they only tell you that when you are young and you are popular or you're power, powerful. Then they say, be humble. And there is nothing wrong with that advice. I take it in good faith. They also urge you to be be mature, Costa. Be mature. Learn to control your emotions. Learn to know what to say and what not to say. They also say that. They say that to me all the time. I take it in good faith. But you know, what about the, the older people? Hmm? The older people who say things that they shouldn't say. This morning, I have two issues. With two people in the CPP. The last time I, I read it, I was disappointed. And I said, you know what? Perhaps I will not talk about it. But it has the same thing has happened again. Mm. By another person in the CPP. And so this time I, I, I figure I should say it. Because had I been the one to say that kind of thing, they will be making noise all over this place. A few weeks ago, I am beginning now, mm. the ANC had their retreat in Buchanan, Grand Bassa County. Mr. Alex Cummings, the political leader of the ANC, mounted the podium, and it was published. You, you may go and read it. He mounted the podium and said, his party, the ANC, is the best party in the CPP. Better than all the other political parties. In fact, if anybody wishes to join the CPP, join it through his party because his party is the best. That statement was immature. It was inappropriate. It was totally unnecessary for a man as old as Cummings to be making. My party is the best. Don't join any other party in the, a in the CPP but my party. I thought we were driving a collective agenda here. I thought this was about everybody. Eh? Mm. Should we be talking about my party is better than the other party, the other party better than my other? <laughs> you know, this is not what we should be saying. We should be driving a collective CPP agenda, not an individual party agenda. That's not what we should be doing. So I think Mr. Cummings was wrong by saying what he said. Now, the other aspect of what he said that he wants to be the political leader, there is nothing wrong with that. He's got his right. I will say this over and over. Ellis Cummings has his right to want to be president. I would never criticize him for expressing his desire to want to be president. But where he talks about his party being the best, don't John CPP through the other party, can't to our party because we are the best party. That was very immature for Mr. Cummings to have said. Now, Mr. Musa Billete, the new chairman 
of the Liberty Party has done the same thing that Mr. Cummings did. Musa Belete yesterday, Musa Belete, first of all, I don't know the guys say they are politicians and they've been around here for a long time. I don't understand them. Musa Belete went to an intellectual center, I, I believe it's St. Pit, right there on Curie Street, Bwakai. Sure. He begins to preach against a war crimes court. Musa Belete says he is against the war crimes court. Wait, 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 wait. Listen. Does Musa Belete not know that it was bad politics to be preaching against the war crimes court? I mean, for Christ's sake, sometimes in politics, you just gloss over things. But for him to definitively say that a war crimes court is a bad thing, that we don't need a war crimes court. Let me tell you something, folks. Musa Belete was not speaking for CPP. He was speaking for himself. I'm not even sure he was speaking for the Liberty Party when he said that. These guys were not embarrassed us here, Bwakai. We are fighting to drive the CPP agenda. When y'all get ready, y'all go to all kinds of things that embarrass us. How do you stand up there? Something that is extremely popular. Name one thing in Liberia that is more popular than the call for a war crimes court. Then you go stand there in the public and you say, uh, we, we don't support war crimes court. War crimes court uh, is not a good thing and blah, blah, blah. First of all, as a politician, you don't even speak against things that are popular. That's the first thing, Bwakai. The first rule of politics is you don't condemn things that are popular. You cannot do that. You cannot be preaching against something that is popular. What kind of politics they say, they say, they say they know. What kind of politics do you know? If you are a real politician, will you go and stand in the public? You are part of a political arrangement of four political parties. And you stand in the, in the public and you say, we are against a war crimes court? Mm. And you think you're sending that message for your one? That statement reflects on the entirety of the political arrangement called the CPP that we are all a part of and that we are making tremendous efforts to promote. Mm -hmm. It was reckless. It was irresponsible. It was wrong for Musa Belete to speak against a war crimes court. Very wrong for Musa Belete to do that. Right here, we put it to a vote. People are, have been condemning Musa Belete all over the place, and people have been calling me left and right. Costa, this is wrong. These guys should not do this. They might not do this. This is wrong. Musa Belete, you should learn how to talk. But I tell you, I say, yeah, no politics. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all older than all oh, y'all know that. Y'all know that. You go stand there and preach against a war crimes court. Then the other thing Musa, Musa Belete said that his agenda is to make his political leader the, the standard bearer of the CPP and the next president of Liberia, Yumbly. There is nothing mm. wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with Musa Belete saying his agenda is to make Yumbly the next president of Liberia. That, 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 that they are right. Yeah. Everybody right. But for Musa ability to go further to say that Yumbly is the best political leader in the CPP, based on what? You see, the same thing now. You try to put the other political leaders down to elevate your own political leader. My woman are the best woman. How are your woman the best woman? Eh? What do you base that on? What made Young Likanga the best? Musa Belete? Are we in convention right now? Are we at the primary trying to vote? Do you have to be saying that in the public? 
Man, some of you people, I, I, I just can't understand y'all, man. Ah, huh? the politics, y'all say, y'all know? Musa Belete, seriously? You got to talk about your political leader being the best among everybody else? This is sad. This is very sad. You all need to learn to know what to say in public and what to not say in public. Mm. You need to know what to say in the public not to embarrass us. Some of these statements when you all make it, people come to us. Costa, what do you say about this? What do you say about that? Because we have people look to us. To hear what we have to say. People look to us. So you got to be careful with what you say in the public as the leader of your party or something. Everybody has the right to promote your party. We agree. But we say we are in a collaboration. That's what we say. We are in a collaboration. You can't be standing there and, and be talking against a war crimes court. Is that good politics, musability? Do you think people are clapping for you? People are not clapping for you. People are pissed because you said that. <laughs> that the politics y'all know? To be condemning things that are popular? <laughs> it's, 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 it's very, very sad. And as I've said here over and over, why I may not be a supporter of Alex Cummings, but I will defend his right to his political ambitions. He has his right to want to be anything he wants to be because he is a, li he is a Liberian. But the comments made by Mr. Cummings to say that his party is the best party, it was wrong. He had no business to say that. Absolutely no business to say that. No business to say that. Some of us, we may not be political leader, but the work we do for the CPP, that's what's carrying the CPP. Because we formed the COP, we essentially brought life into the CPP. That is what has been carrying the CPP. We rejuvenated the CPP. When we made Darius Delon, we, the COP, made Darius Delon senator by the mobilization we brought about through the June 7 pro protest. That is what brought life and momentum to the opposition. And nobody can take that away from us. So we, we have invested too much in the CPP. Those of you who are party leaders, you have to watch your words and what you say. You will not embarrass us here. Musa Bilete had no business saying what he said about war crimes code. No business. No business. If my own political leader, Benana Yuri, stood up and said, the ALP is the best party, don't join any other party in the CPP, come to the ALP, I will speak against him. Let me just tell you this. If my own political leader made that statement that Ellis Cummings made in Grand Bassa, I will speak against him. If he made that statement, I would criticize him if he made that statement. First of all, just a little advice to you, Musa. And that's something I say I will not speak to. You already have a lot of issues people talking about you. Since you became chairman of the Liberty Party, it has been a topic. People can't stop talking about it. CPP people criticizing your being chairman. Uh, CPP people criticizing your being chairman. Members of your own party, some of them are very unhappy. The seditions are using that every, every day. You understand? So you got to tread carefully, my man. You are not on a very solid ground yet. 
Boga, people, people have still not stopped talking about Musa Belete being chairman yet. Yeah. People are still talking against it. Now, I know y'all will say, they're not their business. No, it is their business. Because you know what? It is a political party that wants to get support from the people. So it is their business. You can't say, they're not your business, what we're doing in our party. It is their business. You know, the other day, Yumbly made a post in reaction to the Musa Belete issue on Facebook when, he, when Musa Belete had just been named chairman. Yumbly made a post. You know what she said, boy guy? I was very disappointed when I read that post. Yumbly said, but is, what are they acting like they're for? What are they crying? What are they bereaved for? That's what Yumbly said. The political leader of the Liberty Party said, why are people crying more than they bereaved? Seriously, Yumbly? <laughs> when, I, when I read it, I was like, did she have to post this? You know, I was disappointed. You are in the business of politics. You're trying to win souls to your side. Eh? You can't be sitting out there and be talking about, is, it, is that their business? It is their business, you don't believe? Because you are a politician. You're trying to win votes. So the people have their right. I, I, I read the post. I was like, what? The crime wouldn't they be they bereaved? You have a party. You're trying to win support. You got many of your supporters themselves who are not happy. And then you said this. It was not nice. But well, say you are misquoting him. Yeah, he's, 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 he said we should build institution first. He he's, 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 <laughs> he said he's like, he's, well, I, I just saw Musa ability comment, comment here. Eh? He said he, he didn't say that. Musa ability, everybody misquoting you. Everybody will be misquoting you. I'm not the only one that heard what you said. I'm just, this is just a friendly advice. I'm not, I'm not attacking you, but I'm telling you the truth. You need to stop making these mistakes that are embarrassing us. I beg you. You're not in your party alone. We are all in this arrangement together. Whatever happens in one party affects the overall CPP uh, objectives and ambitions. My advice to y'all, when y'all go speak as the leaders of our parties, you all need to be careful. And that goes to everyone, including my own political leader, Ben and I, Yuri. That's my advice. I've got nothing further to say about this matter this morning. Nothing further to say but to offer a very sincere advice. Now, I will leave it there and I will go to something else. Yep. Now, have you all seen the government's plan? You know, the other day they brought some vaccines, COVID vaccines. Yeah. Yes. They brought vaccines. So, the government of Liberia has made, as a matter of fact, the Guinean government has begun vaccination in Guinea. Uh, that's Ebola vaccine. They've, they've already begun their Ebola vaccination in Guinea. I don't know about COVID, but they've begun their Ebola vaccination. Now, you know, when we tell you guys that these guys are very, very, very... Um, these guys are very, very selfish. You think we're lying. These government people. Listen. <laughs> I want to say this to you. Our government has made a plan to start a vaccination. The vaccine they brought the other day. Uh, how many doses they brought? I think 99,000 doses. 
Yeah, 99,000. 99,000 doses of COVID vaccine. This is our government's official vaccine roadmap. Other countries are focusing on the people who are in the most need. Eh? But Those in Liberia, we are focusing on government officials. Those on the front line, health workers. Health workers. Those are the people taking the vaccine for. In Liberia, we are giving the vaccines to government officials. This is the roadmap. They say they are starting the vaccination on March the 12th. That's tomorrow. At the ministerial com complex. Listen to this, oh. <laughs> Liberia, the hell of our country, oh. We will not see you. The vaccination begins at March on the 12th of March. That's tomorrow at the ministerial complex. And they will begin with, they say, uh, this is P1. They got P1 all the way to P3. They said they will end in September. Phase one. Phase one A, that one. The legislature. Those Sanama Swane in the legislature that they want to begin with first. Look at problem. Yeah. The lawmakers, they get a vaccine first. If they say, let's get ticket to people to go to heaven. They get library or somebody passes. They will get the government first. The government future then will get a ticket first to go to, to go to heaven. If they were evacuating the citizens of Liberia because an earthquake or a natural disaster were, were coming, that the government future then will go first. They will leave the citizens then behind. The legislature, they are the first on the list. This is the government official vaccine roadmap. Legislature, 103 persons. In fact, they're not even giving it to the, to the lawmaker then to their staff also. What guy? Yeah. There are 73 representatives and 30 senators. Mm. They're giving it to only them. They're not even their staffers who are working for them. Legislature, 103 persons. The staffers, they can go to hell. Yeah, but Costa, let's, let me just ask this question. Was it a recommendation from the national legislature to uh, the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Health only decided to start that way? Which one? Uh? My man, I both made a decision. Listen, Bokai, executive, the executive branch of government, 1,500 persons. Every Sanama Swan who is a minister, every idiot who is an assistant minister, deputy minister, from, uh, uh, somebody who is a managing director, all of them getting the vaccine. 1,500 members in the executive branch of government. Hmm. The judiciary, five persons, only the Supreme Court. <laughs> all the other judges that can go to hell. They come to the hell of a hell of The judiciary, five persons. Look, these people. The entire judiciary, only five persons they gave me the vaccine to. The chief justice, Kokpo, Jim Zeta Howard Wolokoli, CNA Yo, Joseph Nagbe, and D. Yusuf Kaba. Five. If any, the other Let judges, oh. Eh? Let the other people go sit down. No, the other people go sit down. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine this? Then we go to the, then they say from there, we'll go to the diplomatic mission. Then we'll go to the UN. Then they say, etc. Let's see, oh. They're not come down to the people that the, the, the librarian say, let's see, yo. <laughs> then, no, no, because that's, that's somebody just texts me saying that, oh, uh, probably the librarians are still having doubt in whether they should take the vaccine or hey, not. Hey, my so man, lead that thing. With... Liberian people see American people taking vaccine. You think they will not, they will, they will not take it? My man, lead that thing, man. Don't talk about vaccine hesitancy here. Vaccine hesitancy, there's not no problem in Liberia. One Liberian man see American men taking vaccine in here, then time they will take it. You understand? Mm. Yeah, there's no vaccine hesitancy here. Uh, then they'll okay, go to the girlfriend then too. They ain't put that one down, but they're they list there too. Yeah, I gave it now. Get the vaccine first. 
Then they go to number two, the traditional leader. Zanzan Kawa, they will get vaccine. But I thought Kawa was so. Why you need COVID vaccine for? <laughs> My people, what Zanzan Kawa need COVID vaccine for? Huh? You have to ask, oh, my Zanzan Kawa, why you need COVID vaccine for? Then they will go to the religious leader then. The pastor then, the bishop then. All the ones that can, uh, that can, that, 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 so we go to the healthcare workers here. Healthcare workers, so the way down. Then from there, after the, the, the religious leaders and then the, the, the traditional leader, then they come down, they say they go to ah Labia. Eh, Labia, 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 Labia Fini. And Costa, you know the funny thing about it, the National Public Health Institute still reporting that we have 2020. 26 cases yet in the country. We are not focusing on them, but mm. we are focusing on lawmakers and other people in, the, in, in, in government. Yeah, I say, then the third group, they come into now, they say that the healthcare workers, they are the third. The healthcare workers, those who are on the <laughs> front line, you say that the third group, I thought they, they should be the first group. They say that the third group, then the fourth group, they go to the elderly, people above 60. Mm. The fifth group, they say people with uh, comorbidities, people with diabetes, people who are what they call it, immunocompromised. Then the fifth, okay, they won't be the sixth group, they count down to the military, people in the police, the military, paramilitary, and military people. Can you imagine people working in the hotel, the hospitality industry? But fellow Liberians, what kind of country begins vaccination with government officials? Government official, then from there they go to zoos and bodios and bishops and pastors before they go to healthcare workers. You see why Liberia can't go nowhere? You see how stupid that are all shoe? Hmm? Mm. You start with lawmakers. 103 lawmakers will take the vaccine first. Five justices of the Supreme Court. <laughs> oh my God, my God. This is so interesting. The people get our vaccine and we decide to give it to the lawmaker then first. Then we give it to all the government officials there. They want to live over before we will we'll go give it to Mama, what can I, what can I, what, what can I, what can I, this all? This is really, 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 really stupid. Let's go to the phone lines, Baga. Let's take, let's take some calls then. We're going to go to the phone lines and take some calls. Okay, so the phone lines are open this morning. And we got some update for you on the brown and some, 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 some case. But let's go to the lines first and take some calls. Okay, 77 The WhatsApp number is plus two three one triple eight six two four one seven one plus two three one triple eight six two. Me, I don't want to know what Papa Zanstan Kawa need vaccine for. The men are so. What zone need vaccine for? The man gets sick. The, the man gets ring kind of all. Then COVID the will catch the man. The man Costa, Costa, the man the man gets sick. The man couldn't, couldn't tell how the three missing boys, where they are, he went, he left and he went in the bush. The man couldn't do anything about the three missing boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. My people, they are pleased to Oh, man, that's like I ain't need a vaccine. Now, Zanzankawa does not need a vaccine. Y'all not waste a vaccine on the man. Let's take some calls there. Let's take the first person here. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Yeah, where you calling from? Yeah, good morning, brother. Uh, good morning, Petro. Morning, William. Make your point quick. We're going to take more calls here. we got a lot of other things to talk about. Yeah, yeah, William. Oh, Petro, you see how they put stupid? You brought... Vaccine, vaccine that is also to get to, to help workers, to fight people that are on the front line. 
gave it, what he gave him uh, battle to love the gave him battle to to Gata Kawade. That guy is say, say so. You just protect yourself. Mm. We see so other sort other players. I see what's like I gave me editor. He, he they carry in that you are, he went them that you are to pull out of the air, he came out of chicken. And I'm not fully be ready, not ready yet. Uh, you brought back to get back to the phone with the phone line. Like, it did back get back. So Lord they got it. Hello, yeah, so okay. 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 The The weekend in Liberia. Ah, yeah. One hundred and three lawmakers, and then the the judiciary, the five justices of the Supreme Court. <laughs> Mama, let's take more calls there. Hello, what country? Yeah, the zona one die, man. Oh, what? Let's take some more calls. Keep your calls coming in. The phone lines are open. Uh, uh, this morning, we're still taking them. Uh, as we put your call through the WhatsApp number. Okay, let's go. To Look at the other people talking about the reason why they're starting with a government official, then so the, the people can be confident for the take the vaccine. The people trust government official, <laughs> you think we trust eh? Yeah, like, y'all go bring food and y'all get in the first food, let them eat it. Say, yeah, don't worry, let the government official eat the food yeah. first so we can trust yeah. them for both. Yeah, your name, you call us from? nonsense. Uh, this is Willas, I'm a great boiler, calling you from Minnesota, Germany. Germany, welcome. Yeah, uh, good morning. Morning, my brother. Yes, yeah, I'm trying to correct, I called to correct the, the fellow who called, mm. who said that the Zanza, Zanza went to Nigeria and they turned him to chicken. It is a lie. That they, he didn't go to Nigeria, they turned him to chicken. Okay. But, uh, but, uh, I think uh, the government of Liberia should follow, you know, the same way other countries are doing. Everyone started with the health worker and the old people, the sick people. Exactly. You know, it's good. So, and uh, they shouldn't politicize, uh, they shouldn't politicize uh, this uh, vaccine. They get it free. Okay. If they free something that they give them, they should follow up like that. So, the caller should understand, you know, sometimes uh, when you say something publicly, it should be truth. It can be against uh, the Nigerians there. No, Zanzakawa never go to Nigeria and they use uh, the tongue to take it. No, when you put in information outside there, it must be true. Okay. Never go. Thank you. Like that, never Thank you. Thank All you right, so my brother. Much. Thank you. But I agree with a, with this a caller from uh, Germany that they should follow the procedure, the same methodology other countries are using in the same vaccine vaccination roadmap. They are focusing on healthcare workers, people who are most vulnerable, most exposed. You don't start with lawmakers and justices of the Supreme Court and all the government officials. So their lives are important more than the healthcare workers who are on the front line. Then you go to souls and religious leaders. I mean, how much risk those people are taking compared to healthcare workers? Baka? What, what kind of nonsense is that? Mm. Let's go take some more calls there. We got other things to talk about here. We, we got this Maria Lucan case. We'll be looking at it this morning and the, the Brandon Samuka issue. Maria Lucan was found guilty for trafficking in person. Since they found her guilty, they cannot sentence the woman. The woman stay passing right. She didn't go to jail. Labrador, hello, what country? Hayaka. Let's take some calls there. Local side is just very off. I listen to Honorable Yue, I mean, uh, Kunis, when he said the money for political party is the best party. I think that's a wrong. I even read, I think, on the simple English news, and we're laughing in the book, I know what we're laughing. Because you don't say that. So you, when you say that you're the best, then why are the other people? Why are they? Are they not the best too? I think this was wrong. And when Muta Grete denied that he never said that what crime code is not good, maybe a fair or more economic crime code. And that's the that it will come. Of course, that was something interesting. Let me to laugh the last time. My brother, Smith Tobe is king. On top of it, he was sitting on front of him and said, all oh, the horses you need that person, we are in he coming from a package. You get friends that can give him money. And we know that on our law, a person not supposed to receive more than $10,000 of gifts. So whenever he gets all that money for that he's trying to give me, and then he's taking that okay to go build this horses you need around the country. So that means the, 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 the law may have to call the person and I ask him. Where are you getting the money from and who are the friends? So we in big trouble because that we hear a big mess. That was but stupid. They, they, passing, they, just, they will just play that again where at the end of the day, the local people will not get it. As long as you start from there, you want to from the executive, as long as you start from the horse, you go to the judiciary, it comes down to the executive and finish. So okay. they go ahead for your country. 
for your contact. Thank you this morning. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Smith uh, actually said what well, brother DJ Lomez said, and I mean, DJ Lomez is a very intelligent man. I trust his uh, comprehension uh, capability. Smith said the president gave it. You know, they see Smith over at Gala and said the job we are Ninth Street Hall, he are building a mansion that he that his son uh, was building the hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before the begins to a pass, you better tell people to go retry that statement. Now the scene Smith over who came by and retried that statement is the one now saying that Joey friend ain't giving him money. Does he not know it's a violation of the code of conduct? No public official is supposed to receive a gift value of more than 200 US. Eh? Mm. And I think president, I think I think the gift should not be more than 10,000 US. So Joey on a friend, they just giving him money. To be building plenty of houses around. So when Joey had, were not president, his friend and all knew him. Eh? What guy? Yeah. What, what kind of president, what kind of man with a half face, a black black toe, then black black and, and something? His friend and just giving him free, free money. What guy? Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, that's not, that, that, that not someone better than Joey had, girl. What a friend and just look at him in there. What the, what the, my man, you're 200,000. Oh, the, oh, the. And yeah, the elf, you're 500,000. Poor. Why are you stupid like that? So, Smith, Smith, over that stupid ball. Let's take some more calls there. Talk about Joe. We have friend giving him money. <laughs> you all right? Good morning. And I see it. It's an for Welcome back from Lofa. And good morning to my father and little Helen Petro Costa. Momo, the critical Jose, I'm calling from somewhere around Moravia. No, Lido, let me ask you one question. You know, do I have the right to form a political party in the country as as Liberian citizen? Of course, Momo. Okay. If I have the right, please, I want you to join me. That will form a political party. No, you know, people that are not. No, and I want to form a party. A part of party already, Momo. Yeah. I'm baby, talking about what code is that important for now. If our baby, I just shut up and listen to the advice. If you hear Britain saying your kind of government is the best. You know how many, you know how many essays you only can have Robert and Osmond level all year? Eh? No, some of the things that the CPA is doing now as, as a part of group, political partners, you have been doing that in order to alleviate the, the suffering for our people. But they said that the other one said, I better on here, I better on here. No, you know, people, they are not serious. These uh, people, they are not serious. Let me say this quickly. You know, my new critical person, so I'm very critical person. They value, you know, they value will go down in your story. Most of our BB uh, political leader, uh, 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 government official in the government are suffering up. They get bad, bad things that in there, including men like Dr. Kabale, all of the senators in the CDC. Okay, Momo. Even in the opposition, they, they badly will carry them down because the signal they have, when our bad signal met, uh, 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 go along with them, they will go down and we'll have some of the men in the tire. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much, Momo. And Costa, you know, uh, <laughs> for me, this COVID uh, 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 vaccine will be a business. They'll start, they'll start selling it. Because even the, the uh, certificate, before you get a certificate to travel, you have to pay 75 USD. So what, what about the COVID vaccine? Well, they will, they will not be brave to sell it openly. They will, they will sell it under the table. <laughs> yeah, but to, they can't op openly sell it because it was given to them as a, as a gift. So they will not be brave to sell it openly. But yes, if you want buy a COVID vaccine now, trust me, you just need to wait small. By the time they start the vaccination tomorrow, eh, you will be able to buy the vaccine. What did they get saying, like, bro? Pwah. My, my, my man, you want COVID vaccine? Just wait tomorrow. Let them start with the law. Let them start with the law, make them. You have a juke, buffer team of You know who gave me the vaccine? That is healthcare workers, though. The very yeah. people who you're not starting the vaccine with. That the other one will be administering the vaccine. When Speaker Chimba and Abate, hmm, when I have failed looking like old man voting, when they come for their own vaccine, the way I'm going to juke them, hmm, I'm going to juke them good. <laughs> but, but All the law maker then. I'm going to vaccine, then I can be a minister of vaccine. And after vaccine here, then I'm going to be giving somebody vaccine. Can you imagine? <laughs> I say, when Bobo Chipma come for a vaccine, that answer then why you may go hate that pregnant woman, the woman lose her child. You're going to juke that bugger good. 
<laughs> Come on, Chukio. Let's take some more calls there. You get a poor vaccine, and he say the poor one side administering vaccine to corrupt people, then wicked people, then. Yeah. Mela, Samia Twe. Samia Twe, what been uh, doing harmonization with your salary? When y'all y'all get rid of me vaccine? I'm gonna tell you where I'm gonna do the Samia Twe. I ain't gonna tell you. Now, ugly bugger, you're my chicken. You pass from my side, Camera, before Canada, to Colella. Yeah. Thank you very much for the my go accept all the sacrifices that you have to make. Oh, uh, to the point, you know, we in the um, we in the twenty first century now. We have to be very very careful with what we are saying in the problem. And to those political leaders that are having to be the stakeholder in this country, so they should watch their word. And to the fact that I'm a medical man. I will not be today. I'm a medical man. I'm not here or see my vaccine. Then I go and minister vaccine to somebody that will be a, giving me another more problem. I should be secure. I should be protected before I try to give vaccine to somebody. So they, they, they are again doing something. They, they want to another more demonstration by the health. That's all. We, we need to be protected. We need to be protected. I will not go in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bathroom there vaccinating people and not be a, a, a bathroom. I need to get all my protection before I, I, I administer any vaccine sure. to somebody. So okay. if that be the case, maybe I will resign from, from, from the Health Worker Association and remain silent and get to my private business. Thank you. Yeah. And that just a cost that the guys, the, the, the health workers will not agree on that. I can... I can be somebody that haven't taken a vaccine. Then I'm going to be administering the vaccine to people. Ah. I say, I'm going to juke the burger then good. First of all, <laughs> the healthcare workers, sh they, they should not even agree to do the vaccination. Let mm. them find other people to vaccine, to, 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 to administer the vaccine. Yeah. They should find other people to administer the vaccine. Healthcare workers are frontline workers. They should be the first people to vaccine, vaccinate. You vaccinate them. Then he tell them, say, the Mogo be giving vaccine to male a buffer chimmer then. To Abate yeah. then. Eh? To, to Natalia Maguil then. Samuel, Samuel Tway then. Yeah. Y'all don't do it. On a serious note, the healthcare workers need to mobilize right now and say, we will not be a part of the administering of the vaccines. We will not be a part of it. That's it. Do not agree to be a part of this nonsense. What kind of nonsense is that? The vaccine not for them. They didn't buy the vaccines. Start with the frontline workers. Use the same roadmap. Begin with healthcare workers. Then you work your way to people who are immunocompromised, people who are at high risk, people with diabetic conditions, heart conditions, and stuff like that. You work your way down. Then you go to the elderly people. You can talk about government officials. Five justices of the Supreme Court will take the vaccine first. Kwakwa ne. Mele kwakwa pa you see you you see to get the vaccine. Now two needle you must pull you must you must pull inside him. Can't talk about you must get government officials there. One thousand five hundred members of the executive branch of government. They take the whole government. Every assist one thousand five hundred. You know what that number represents? That is Bwaka. That's every assistant minister. Every deputy yeah. minister, every managing director, every deputy managing director, every commissioner, that's the entire government, the ex executive branch of government. 1,500 people. Are you freaking kidding me? What kind of nonsense is that? Then you expect the healthcare workers to go and, 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 and agree to, do not vaccinate those idiots. Don't vaccinate them. Let's take some more calls there, Baka. Mm. And yeah. remind me, we're gonna go to the Brandon Samu Samuka case. We have some update yeah. there. They had a hearing a few days ago. Actually, what day was it? Tuesday it was at the Supreme Court. I will I will tell you what happened there. Very in interesting. But let's take a few more calls first. So the phone lines are open. Call you'll be live here on the show. We're still taking your calls on the various numbers that were announced. Uh uh, we still anticipate those calls as soon as we come in. We'll take them and put you through. We're discussing about the roadmap of the vaccine, the COVID vaccine. 
uh, and you can be a part of the discussion this morning. So mm, there's no call here. Cause so good, no cause. That's a good thing. Listen, Mariah Lucan, the human trafficker of the of the century from Liberia. The Mariah Lucan case has gone cold, completely cold. First of all, the case dragged on forever. Finally, Mariah Lucan was convicted. Ever since Lucan was convicted, the judge is yet to sentence Mariah Lucan. At this point, it is not the government. It is the judge. Okay. I say the judge has not yet sentenced this woman. The woman was found guilty. The trial is a lasted for 16 months. That's a long trial. 16 months, that's over one year on this one case. What guy? They've gone ahead. They brought down a guilty verdict. The judge has reserved ruling and sentencing. Mariah Lugan cannot be sentenced. The judge cannot or has not sentenced Mariah Lugan. I am told that the government has filed a bill of uh, uh, they, they, they are preparing to file something a writ of mandamus I think to compel the judge. I don't know whether a writ of mandamus can be filed against a judge. They want to file a writ. Because the, why does the judge not want to sentence Mariah Lucan? What guy? Yeah. She's been found guilty. Sentence the woman. Send her to prison. My people, Mariah Lucan has not been sent to prison yet. The woman is still passing around. Imagine if Mariah Lucan was some kind of ordinary person. What guy? But now she's in jail. But now Mariah Lucan would be in jail. But this is the same Mariah Lucan who, even though she was being prosecuted for a grave crime as trafficking in children and profiting from it, the government of Liberia was still awarding her contracts to provide catering service. To the Ebola patients or the Corona patients at uh, uh, what's the place name? Uh, the various hospital. Yes, they gave her a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract without a bidding process. When we exposed it that time, Mariah Lucan came herself and she admitted it. She said it herself that it happened. Now here we are. Mariah Lucan is still passing around and they have not sentenced her. The woman has been found guilty. But to send her to jail, she's too important to send to jail. My people, what kind of trouble they so? What kind of trouble we see in the country so that the big people they can't go, they can't go to jail? Even if they, they are bad lucky that they find them guilty, I need to know the name of this judge. I believe it's just CNN Johnson. CNN Johnson, but I need to be sure. I need to be sure. I need to know the name of the judge so every day I can put my mouth on her. CNN Johnson. She was the last judge presiding over the case, but I want to be very sure that she's the one. What's the name of the judge? I'm going to ask my souls right now. Brother, if we got calls there, let's take the calls. Okay, now take this person. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. Okay. Uh, welcome back and come at Super again. Good morning, Pedro. This is Asumana Thomas from Baltimore. Welcome, welcome Asumana. Because uh, a few days ago, I had this uh, talking lady on my post. I was asking why I become a star. And thank you very much for reawakening this place again. I mean, Liberian people need answer. Liberian people need to know what's going on. This lady must, must go to jail. She is being convicted. Yeah, Brandy Samoka, you know, who did not even spend the money on himself. They have prosecuted him so quickly. 
some man who are you know, taking people's children away for years and nothing is done. On the vaccine issue, you see, the Liberal people like their leader, you know, so let their leader take the vaccine first. They put these people in power, so let them have the vaccine. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Uh, thank you. Now, listen, I was correct. Criminal Code B, Judge CNN Clinton Johnson, she's the judge. CNN Clinton Johnson is the judge. She is the one who does not want to send Mariah Lucan to prison. Waka, can you imagine that? CNN Johnson, the judge of criminal court B, is the one who Mariah Lucan was found guilty when? When did they convict her? Uh, Months ago. I, I come in, Waka. Me and my souls, we are chatting. Don't worry. Yeah, I want I want to know when was she com convicted? Do you know how I long ago it. this was? It's been a long time since they convicted this woman. If the woman that was some kind of opposition person, poor guy, mm. she not in jail long time. She in jail. If the woman that was opposition person, CNN Johnson, you are a woman, a mother. Mariah Lucan sold people's children abroad for five thousand dollars a piece, and you come here and you you can't convict this woman. Mariah Lucan is in court again. Five hundred eighty people. She founded a club, one of those pyramid schemes. Five hundred eighty people, and the minimum to join was five hundred dollars per hand. CNN Johnson, you better sentence this woman to prison. Sentence. Mariah Lucan to go to prison to do time. Now, that will not bring these mm. people's children back. Bwakai? Yeah. They should, they want, they, the properties that she bought from the proceeds generated from selling these people's children, Bwakai, they should seize all the properties from her. That's what they should do. How would they cost that? She was found How guilty. Bwakai, she was found guilty in September of last year. September of last year. Let's do the math. Let's count the months. October, November, December, January, February, March. Six months. Six months. For six months, the woman was found guilty. The woman can go to jail. My people, CNN Clinton Johnson, if you, you, if you respect yourself, you will send the woman to prison. Waka, how long does it take for a judge to sentence somebody? You find a person guilty, you can send them to, to prison? Liberia too rotting, man. The country too rotting, the country too rotting. CNN Johnson, according to what I'm told, Waka, I'm told that Mariah Lucan has bribed CNN Johnson. Waka, you hearing me? That the woman has bribed the judge, and that is why the judge cannot send her to prison. Can you imagine that? This woman has been found guilty, and yet she is walking around free and getting government contracts, forming pyramid schemes and duping people of hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is sickening. Let's take one caller there, and then we'll move on. We have our guest from Send, Send, Send Wave. Uh, Avia will be joining us shortly. One caller, Boka. Okay, let's see if we can take uh, somebody. You can be our final caller. Let's take um, this person here. Ali Kaba. Mm -hmm. Ali, good morning. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, uh, Baga. Good morning to the first time show. You know, I just want to get the information that we like the Liberians here in Italy. We have serious problem here. My Liberians, like, they just lost her life here. I think to the hospital up to three or four months ago. She passed away. Uh, the Liberian embassy here has rejected her body, left the body in the hands of the Italian government, and now they are threatening to put her body among the the could be patient, body, and good very well. That's the situation we are facing here. 
the husband and the wife, uh, the woman and the husband who are through here at Brooklyn Beach. They are only through here, and we the parents, we are very through here. There's no way we can handle this situation. It's very, very difficult for us. Look here, here, our husband is trying to get a body from the hospital, but there's no possibility. The embassy has totally abandoned the life. So we can never get in the hands of the Italian and the Jones area or anyhow. So this is the situation we are facing here as Liberian in Italy. We are very few here. There is no way to be trying our possible means to put things under control, but it's not easy. So I just want to put this information out there. Thank you, yeah, Ali Kaba. Ali Kaba told me about this, about this situation involving a lady who passed away. And and they're trying to get her her body, and they want us to raise money to get the body. Ali, you know, I know a lot. I get a lot of requests every day from people for also raise money, raise money for this, raise money for that. I don't mean to be insensitive, right? But Bwakai, listen. Uh, for me to go and tell the librarian, Ali has been behind me for this to go tell the librarian people say let's raise money to get a dead body. Bwakai, you know what a lot of people will tell me. What about the living? Huh? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say, oh, okay, let me put it to the people. Folks, this is what our brother Ali Kaba has said. That he's been behind me with this issue. Costa, 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 please talk to the people. Uh, let's raise money for to get this woman's remains. The woman is gone. First of all, when somebody died, they're gone. That body, not nothing. You understand? So that we should raise money to go and pay. Uh, what did Ali say? I think he said a few thousand dollars. Let me see here. Ali Kaba, Ali Kaba. Ali sent me a message. He said he need a few thousand dollars to get a get body from the place. And Ali, I'm looking for your message here. Ali sent me the message. So the point is, we 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 go raise money for to get the dead body from the place. I mean. A lot of people would, would not would, would not contribute. Yeah, they would not contribute. It would be like, okay, so, you know, why should we help the dead when we can help the living, right? It's, it's, it's not like resources are not scarce, you know? So, Ali, that's the situation. I've been thinking about it, but uh, that would be my first time raising money for the dead. We always raise money for the living, right, boy guy? Always. I've never raised money for a dead person bef before. Does the dead really need money? You know, that's 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 the thing, you know? Yeah. So, Ali, I've been... $4,000. Can you imagine? You know, $4,000. So they say we're going to raise $4,000 for the person who passed away, you know? So, yeah. You know, I'm not saying she shouldn't be buried with dignity. That's not what I'm saying. You know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying raising money for that sort of thing is hard. You know, for a dead person. Man, it's, 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 it's hard. I haven't done it before. I haven't raised money for the dead before. We raised money for the living. Yeah, but not for the dead. You know, I haven't done that before. So, um, uh, this time I'm going to put it to the family to be before people say I'm not in the family. But I don't have to be, I don't, I don't have to do everything. They don't make it sound like that, that every time somebody comes to me, I got to do it. You know how many fundraising re requests I get every day? Costa, please can host my fundraising. Costa, raise funds for me. You, I can't do that. I can't. So the people will say every day, Costa, yeah, yeah, now nah, asking for money. No, I can't. You understand? Yeah. And by the time you start with one person, black guy, eh? by the time we go raise money for one person, mm. yeah, then they will say, oh, so somebody else passes away somewhere else, they will say raise money for that other person so they can bring them home or so they can bury them. I, I, I sympathize with the family, but it doesn't mean that I must go and raise money for, I, I can't. I, I just, I'm not comfortable with doing that. That's all. I'm not comfortable with raising money for the dead. 
People have asked me, Costa, go raise money for Archie Pompon, raise money for the other person. In fact, Stephen Johnson just suggested to me that the COP make a, a donation to Archie Pompon. And I agree with him right off the bat. We'll bring it to our people's attention. We'll go into our coffers and see how we can find some money to give to Archie Pompon. But what I should go raise money for him now, I'm not comfortable with raising money now because I just raised money for myself recently. So I'm not going to raise money publicly, not any anytime soon. You know, we're not going to do that anytime soon. We can't keep raising money, raising money, raising money. Some other idiot here telling me I, I should get $4,000 from the $20,000 you raised for yourself. You damn stupid fool. Was that why the money was raised? Hmm? <laughs> That's not why the money was raised. Some of you can just talk nonsense. I raised money for my lawsuit. I feel like making a down payment. Then you say, I'm going to go get the, take the money from my lawsuit and, and give it for them to go bury somebody. I mean, are you listening to yourself? You're crazy. You stupid fool. So I, I can't honor every request that comes to me. Costa, please can't host my fundraiser. You know how many requests I get to go raise funds? I can't do that. And people have to understand. You, wanna, you understand? People have to understand that I can't help everybody. I can't. I can't help everybody. Nobody can help everybody. You understand? So just because I can talk and people would, re would, would respond in a favorable way does not mean I should take advantage of, of that. And you, know, you know what I mean, boy guy? Just because if I open my mind and say, oh, yellow help John Brown, then people will join in to help. Doesn't mean that I should do it every day. You know what it means? That means every day I will be raising funds here for, for people. And I will not do that. I will not do that. Those who are lucky, every now and then we help them, we raise money for them, we'll do it. But to say every day I should be raising money. Every day. Because I raise money for the other person. Because the other person, people come to me every freaking day with a request, either for me to give them money directly myself or to raise money for them. Can you imagine? People get scholarship. Costa, I just got a scholarship. Please buy my ticket or please do this. Because we do it for some people does not mean we have to do it for everybody. We can't. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. If you call me insensitive, that's it. Fine. But we can't help everybody, yeah? Huh? We can't help everybody. Thank you so much. And with that particular request, Ali, Ali Kaba, I sympathize with the family, but I am sorry. I'm not comfortable with raising money uh, anytime soon. Nope. The people that helped me with some money, I'm not going to come back to them and can't ask them for money again. Nope. I'm not going to do that. I'm very sorry. Ali Kaba. Okay, let's take our, our, let's take our guest here. Uh, good morning, Harry. How are you? Good morning, my friend. Welcome. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for having me today. Good, good, good. Uh, yes, yesterday was a holiday, and you and I and I forgot. I, I didn't. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. How was the, how was your holiday? How was your day? Well, is is the decoration day as we call it? People go to um, you know the uh, resting places of their loved ones, and okay. you know clean up the. Uh, you know, and 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 lay reeves and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that's what it was. And, an, emo uh, an emotional day, I understand that. It is. Yes, it is. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you very much. I I'm always always a pleasure to be here and and talking to you, as you know. And obviously, for everyone who is listening to us, Henry and I, we we talk uh, often and. And we, we, we share uh, kind of like uh, how much we care about Liberians and what do we want to do with St. Wade. So, so it's a pleasure to be here with you today, Henry. It is a pleasure to always have you, Javier. Um, do we still have the 1%? I mean, I, 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 when I send money nowadays, I don't even check to see what the fee is because <laughs> I know it's low, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, yes. We still have the 1%. I, I would like to take this opportunity as well to, to remind everyone that we still have the 1% but it's probably coming to an end uh, towards the end of March. So I will encourage everyone to try uh, if you can, if you want to, to send money Take to your loved ones. 
Yeah, and also I think now, like I probably next week, we'll have like some of the tax uh, incentives back in the US. So obviously that all of that will help. So we want to keep the 1% to help people when they receive the money back in the US that they can share with, share the love and send wave uh, to Liberia. Beautiful, beautiful, Avia. Thank you very, very much. So folks, um, the one the one percent is amazing, uh, and um, and so I mean I like you know a lot of people, I mean people love it that you know is 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 um is a, is is super affordable even the normal rate, uh, but aside from that, it's just the convenience yeah. and the speed at which the funds get. Uh, sent and received by the recipient in Liberia is what really blows people away. And that's our main goal, Henry. And that's, we always talk about this, but it's true. Like our main goal is to make it simple, fast and affordable, like, as simple as sending a text. And I think that's what we are trying to achieve. And, and I think, I, I do believe that we are doing something good and, and all the feedback, well, almost all the feedback that we receive from people in Liberia and in other markets is that we are actually helping. And I would like to, to, to say something here as well, like, please, if anyone has any questions, any concerns, something doesn't, doesn't feel right or something doesn't look good, please do email me. My name is Javier, J-A-V-I-E-R, at sendwave.com. Please send me an email. I will take care of it. I will review it and I will solve it for you. That, that's something I would, like, I would like to share because sometimes when you are sending money, you need to feel the trust and you need to feel that there's a person behind or someone actually taking care of your money. And I'm here for that. I'm here to try and help you, all of you, to feel comfortable when you are using SendWave. Beautiful. There's another issue that comes up to me all the time, every now and then. Somebody would mistakenly uh, insert one wrong digit in the phone number when they are sending the money. And that yeah. means the money would go to the wrong person rather than the person to whom they intended to send the money. Yeah. And some of them have reached out to me. The first thing we do is that uh, I will try to contact a friend I know who works for MTN mm -hmm. to inform them. And then they will put a the block on the transaction until then they contact send with to try to. But just tell us the process. What happens when someone mistakenly sends money to the wrong recipient, to the wrong person? What the, the should that person do? Yeah, the, best, the best thing that person do is contact our support uh, center as soon as possible because the transaction like will be flying, like virtually flying from the US to Liberia. So the sooner you contact our contact support and our contact center, the, the sooner we could help you to, to solve this issue. Uh, this is obviously, I, I hope it doesn't happen uh, very often because normally you have the, the phone saved in your, the number saved in your phone, etc. But please, if you have any issues, not only for this, but for any other issue you have, either you can email me or you can reach out to our uh, contact center that works 24-7 from the U.S. And you can call them. And I promise you, they are beautiful people and they are really looking forward to help everyone because they have that motivation. Like the motivation uh, to, to work in SendWave and, and in, the support, in the support team is to help uh, people to solve the issues. So that's why we are here for. That's beautiful. Uh, that's what I often tell them. They call me. I would just give them the number. They get in touch with SendWave, and then you know they get on there for them. Uh, so let's talk about um, uh, somebody says here yeah, to get the money in Liberia. I'm gonna read a few of the comments here. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Costa, yeah. I use SendWave all all the time, but they get the money. Uh, I presume this is getting the money in Liberia is a is a problem. That's what the person is, is saying. So that is still an issue. It's still a challenge because of the liquidity problem, general liquidity problem in the country. Yeah, and, and that's an issue that we are trying to solve as much as we can, uh, talking to our partners at MTN, talking to other banks and, and try to get more, more liquidity into the market. As you know, like the dollars are not as uh, abundant as, as they should be in Liberia, being absolutely honest. So that's one one thing that we are we are trying to solve with our partners, with our uh, with the banks and with MTN and other partners. And then there is another issue that we we talk about sometimes, which is like when you go to to an agent, and unfortunately, it, because it doesn't happen very often, it's just like I don't know, like one percent of the agents. 
and they try to charge people an extra fee. And that's something that we are against and we are pushing and we are fighting and we are talking to MTN on a daily basis to fix this. So my best advice for everyone is to try and go to an, to an actually MTN branch. That's and if that's, if, that, if that's not possible, because sometimes it, could be, it couldn't because you don't have an MTN branch in every corner, when you go to an agent, you need to know that there are certain fees that they could charge only if you want to withdraw the money. Because if you keep your money in your wallet, they cannot, they shouldn't and they cannot charge you any fee. And you can pay from your wallet, like for food, for health. Um, for gasoline health, uh, stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So you actually need to withdraw the money if you don't, if, if you don't want to. So so that's what, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying to everyone is try to go to an MTM branch. And if that's not the case, please be sure that they shouldn't, like an agent shouldn't be charged any extra fee just if you want to keep the money in your wallet. And if you want to withdraw, there is a, an official table that, that they can charge only up to X, depending on uh, depending on, on certain things. But they will never charge you ten dollars to withdraw your your one hundred dollars, for example. Beautiful. Uh, Musu Jabate wants to know whether you could send uh, more than three thousand dollars within a month. Yes, Musu, you certainly can. They can they can increase your. Uh, they can increase your monthly um, you got it, limit. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get your limit, your limit increased because you have a business or because you you can send a lot of money, which will be a very a very uh, fortunate position for everyone. Uh, you can just reach out to us and, and we will do some verification because, as you know, we are regulated and we need to fulfill our obligations with the financial entities and the governments. But if you give us all the information and all the documentation that we need, we will be very happy to increase the limit because we are a legal company and we are doing everything by the books as it should be. That's very, very good. That's very, very good. Uh, you, I, I had my limit increased. They just had to do a, another layer of very verification and yeah. we increase my limit this is just to prevent as you know like anti-money it's, it's, it's a tool to to fight against the money laundering any money that will go to 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 wrong organizations or people who don't want to do good things in in liberia so that's why we need to to be sure that uh, what we do and the money that goes through our system it's completely uh safe and secure and it's completely legit as well and actually henry i would like to add one more thing as well on this is that we are so happy with Liberia. We, we see that we are being received in such a good way that we are planning to do a, a big uh, media campaign. So we are trying, we are gonna invest money on, on trying to reach out to Liberians because we believe in the market and we want to reinvest uh, the money that we, we are, we are uh, seeing and we, we want to reinvest money in Liberia locally as well. So we are gonna uh, do some campaigns there as well and try to, to empower uh, people in Liberia as well with some way. Okay, thank you very, very much uh, 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 for, for that. So your expansion plans, uh, are you still working on it, including more yes. countries? Yes, we are, and, and we know, we, we talk about this, sometimes it's slow because and it, I, there's a reason for, for, for us being slow as well. It's just, we need to fulfill again all the obligations and we need to be sure that whenever we launch a new market, either a sender market or a receiver market, we need to fulfill with all the obligations from a banking perspective. We need to fulfill all the obligations from an insurance perspective, as you know. So Australia, it's on the plan. It's on the roadmap. Um, hopefully soon I will tell you it's live and we can, we can talk about it. But for now, it's, it's on the plan. It's on the roadmap. And, and we believe that we are going to launch very, very soon, hopefully. Um, hopefully, yes. Fantastic. Uh... Is there anything else you want us to talk about before we take leave of you? So up until the end of March, we can still enjoy the one, the one, the one percent. So right. those who want to take a take a, take advantage now is the time. It's, exactly. No, and I I want again, like I want to stress that we are here, like we are people behind a, a, an app. You know, like when you go to all, other competitors, it feels that there is this big company who only care about making money and and they don't care about. Look, I'm here. The team is here. If you want anyone else in the team to jump here and show and show the face, we will be very happy because we love this. We love to be in touch with people. And I was reading the comments uh, two weeks ago from your Facebook, and I couldn't comment, but I wanted to reply to people. So please, if anyone has any questions, just reach out to me or reach out to Henry, and Henry will send the questions to me. 
straight away because we want everyone to feel comfortable and, and that's the mission that we are we are on a mission to making to making people's life easier uh, through sending money as simple as a text and that's pretty much how i want to end uh, i don't want to, to 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 talk about how great we are we just i just want to show my our help in case anything goes wrong and tell us this one percent is going to go until the end of march so be sure uh, to use to use and wave this month well folks that's uh, Javier Cara uh, from the Sendwave team. He joins us every now and then uh, to talk about Sendwave. Sendwave, you know, uh, maintains that personal touch. They want to be personal, not the big app behind making money, making sending money easy, 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 easy. No, they they care about the customer. They care. They care about their people, and so that's why they're accessible and they're available to talk to you all the time. Thank you so much, Javier. Thank you, Henry. Have a lovely you. day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. All right. Uh, now, folks, we said we're going to talk about the... Uh, I'm going to give you an update on the Brownie Samokai case. Of course, I'm going to give you that update now. Um, let's see. We just took leave of Javier. So, about a week or so ago, you all recall, or some of you may recall, the MPC of Simeon Fremo ran to the Supreme Court and filed and petitioned the court of justice in Chimber, uh, Justice Joseph Nagbe, for a rate of prohibition to prohibit uh, Brian Samukai's uh, certification. And the reason for that, I said, it was political. The whole thing was arranged. The whole thing was arranged. They waited until Joseph Nangwe, who is an avowed sedition, was a justice in Chimba. Then they paid Simeon Freeman to go and file it. Simeon Freeman filed it. Simeon Freeman has no legal standing. To put it simply, he has no fish to fry in this oil. But because the system is rigged, the whole thing was premeditated, just as we had anticipated, just as we had. Uh, speculated. So they went to the court, to the Supreme Court. Browning's lawyers were there and um, the lawyers representing the MPC were also there. The lawyers representing the National Elections Commission were also present. They went before the justice in Chimba, Joseph Nagbe. Now, Browning's lawyers made a brilliant argument that the Supreme Court had already said that Brownie Samokai should be certificated. That's what the Supreme Court said. Now, the Supreme Court cannot revise its own decision. That decision is binding. Of course, it's binding. The Supreme Court has already made a decision that Brownie Samokai be certificated. A single justice in Chimba cannot overturn nor revise that decision. The lawyers representing Simeon Freeman made no sound argument. The argument was silly. And without any... But here is the part that was interesting. Now, we didn't expect that Simeon Freeman's lawyers would make any sound argument as a basis for their rate of prohib prohibition. But here is what shocked everybody. Joseph Nagbe. Associate Justice of the, of, of the Supreme Court and Justice in Timber presiding without any legal justification, without any reliance on any provisions of the law, moved to grant the alternative rate, which basically means that, you know, when the rate, when a rate of prohibition is, is, is issued, it's temporary until the matter is brought up before that judge and it is heard. Once it is heard, the judge may either decide to deny the alternative rate or the permanent rate to have that matter completely prohibited until further hearing is held. Justice Joseph Nagwe granted the alternative rate, which means the matter is hereby prohibited from happening, which is Browning's certification cannot happen. And then, you know what he did? 
he turned over the case to the full bench of the Supreme Court and said that when the full bench is, is ready to, to hear the case, he, Justice Nagbe, will recuse himself. I mean, he will step aside. But just listen to this. But he did not quote any law as the basis for granting that alternative rate. He did not. He did not say this matter needs to be looked for into based on this law or based on that law. Nothing of the sort. All Justice Nagbe did was to sit there, listen to the frivolous arguments that were made by Simeon Freeman's lawyers. After that, he simply said, I will, I will refer this matter to the full bench of the Supreme Court and when the court is about to hear this matter, I will recuse myself. Fellow Liberians, when a judge grants an alternative rate of prohibition to say that means we move from the temporary rate to the permanent rate of prohib prohibition, there has to be a legal basis for that. Justice Nagbe did not provide any. The matter has been decided. When the Supreme Court ruled in the Brown and Samoka case involving the AFL pension fund, the Supreme Court made it very clear that Browning's rights, political rights, were not to be infringed upon. That their ruling did not affect or did not intend to affect Browning's political rights. So you, so you see, the very same Supreme Court cannot at this time Revise his ruling regarding that. What Joseph Nagbe did was clear. It was meant to simply stall and delay and frustrate Browning Samokai further. He listened to the arguments. He made no point himself at all after everything was said. He said, I will refer the matter to the full bench of the Supreme Court. And when this matter is being heard, I will recuse myself. So that means the full bench now has to go and sit on this Brown and Samuka case again to listen to what was... Now, Simeon Freeman and his people are quoting the Constitution. That's what they are doing. They're quoting the Constitution. Oh, yeah, the Constitution said this, the Constitution said that. But listen to this, folks. Just listen to this. What they don't know, they, they are quoting the Constitution, Article 30. Article 30 of the Constitution states, the eligibility criteria for election to the legislature. That's why it states. It is clear and unequivocal. Very clear. Now, the Eligibility criteria, it doesn't say if somebody were found guilty of a matter, they cannot be. That is the constitution. It is preeminent. It takes precedence over every other law. It does not say that if somebody were found guilty of a crime, cannot be. No. The eligibility requirements are there. To run for the Senate, it says you must be a natural born Liberian citizen. You must be domiciled within a constituency for at least five years, and you must have a property value. You must have a property at a certain value. You must be 30 years of age. That's what the Constitution states. Now, there was absolutely, absolutely nothing that Joseph Nangbe could have said to say that Brownie Samokai. This complaint, this, this rate of prohibition should not be uh, squashed. He didn't say anything to support his decision to delay Brownie's certification further. They are just using the law in the wrong way. It's a travesty of justice. I refer the matter to the Supreme Court, to the full bench. Now you take the matter to the full bench of the Supreme Court. The full bench of the Supreme Court has to now preside or assemble 
preside over this matter. It's going to take several weeks. Or who knows how, how long they're going to take to drag their feet just to keep frustrating this man. That's what they are doing. That's what they are doing to keep frustrating this man. It is sad. To grant a rate of an alternative rate of prohibition. An associate justice presiding in chamber has to rely upon a law. He has to say, the law says X, Y, and Z, but he did not quote any law. He did not make any legal justification for his decision to grant that alternative rate, which essentially means to forestall or to store Browning certification further. We told you the whole thing was rigged. Justice Nangba is a sedition. They waited for him to be the justice in Chimba and they paid Simeon Freeman $8,000 to file this nonsense. And he did exactly what we expected he would do. That's what he did. Well, folks, we will be back here tomorrow. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye.